Hey there. Well, thanks for letting me vent about this stuff, and thanks for your thoughtful comments about it, both on YouTube and on Twitter. I know that I haven't responded to all the comments. Uh, I've, you know, left hearts and such on, on a lot of them. But I have read them, and I'll be thinking about them for quite a while. Um, that's kind of how this works. You know, I, I may not change my mind on something immediately, although that does sometimes happen. But, uh, you know, uh, after enough, uh, uh, you know, getting shown, you know, different things here and there, I'll, I'll often change my views on something. Um, or maybe I won't. Maybe I'll, I'll be more solid in the views that I already have. But uh, thank you very much for those comments. It's very helpful. But those things I said in that video were things that have been going through my head for, for many months. But I just didn't know how to put it in words in a reasonable way. Perhaps it still wasn't very reasonable. I don't know. But I was able to express a number of things that I was concerned with. Normally I would have went to a, uh, yeah, like when there's things that just get stuck on my mind like that, that I don't necessarily want to post publicly or whatever, I would go to this political forum called Political Wrinkles. And I, I've been going there since, what, 2005 or something? Maybe, no, no probably 2006 or 2007, I think. But, uh, yeah, I've been going there quite a while, and, uh, uh, but the, it's down. I, I, it's been down for a few months now, I, and I, I, I was really disappointed. The owner of it, uh, someone has the, the name C.N. Red, with two D's on the end. Um, he, he was an older gentleman, and uh, uh, his health wasn't always that great, and so I imagine something must have happened to him, and I'm... You know, rest in peace, Ian Red. I, I, I do miss your forum. You know, I had hoped someone else would take it over, but uh, apparently not. So, you know, I should say right away that it's quite possible that so many of these people who feel that their realities have been pulled out from under them are really in the few. There, there's very few of them. There's, there's far fewer of them than we would be led to believe. And that most people are adapting to these social changes just fine. That the people on the right who are complaining the loudest are just showing their inability to adapt to change. And that those people and their religious ideologies are in their last throes. Which is why they're fear-mongering so hard right now. I mean, isn't some of how we measure intelligence based on how well people can adapt to change? But is that really fair to say in this instance? I mean, isn't that a roundabout way of saying that, well, if you don't like the way that society is radically changing, you're just stupid? Kind of seems that way, doesn't it? One of the big issues is that people need something that they can count on. They need to know that there are at least the most basic similarities between people, you know, between our fellow humans. And when people feel like that's being stripped away, whether it actually is being stripped away, I don't know. But when people feel like it's being stripped away, they panic. I mean, anything that seemingly threatens to take away one sense of purpose is going to make someone panic. I mean, if you have no sense of purpose, you have no will to live, really. But is anyone really trying to strip that away? Probably not consciously, anyway. Most people just want to be accepted in some way. But it's also just not possible for everyone to just be accepted. Tolerated, yes, but accepted? There can be the facade of acceptance, but that's not really the same, is it? Anyway, I think there's a lot of fear-mongering going on right now. The clawed part of Christian culture is losing its stranglehold on society more and more. And they're freaking out about it. They wonder... Well, where is the order going to come from? Why would people follow rules if there's no consistent principles backing them? Won't crime and chaos increase? I mean, to be fair, if the golden rule in treating people the way that we would want to be treated is no longer any good and we have to switch to uh, treating people the way that they want to be treated... And we can't know how someone else really wants to be treated unless we've been educated about the lived experiences of the group they belong to, or much more accurately, their actual individual experiences, their lived experiences as individuals. 
yeah, if the golden rule isn't any good anymore, then how do we get social order among those who are ignorant of other people's realities? It's not like we can force people to not be ignorant, no matter how many seminars we authoritatively force them to attend. Should we have to keep track of everyone else's realities all the time? How do we choose which realities are important to pay attention to? This all gets very messy, doesn't it? Perhaps that's what's really in question here. Is the golden rule really good enough anymore? To me, it should be good enough. To me, that's what's required in order for us to be able to handle multiculturalism. We can't force people to be knowledgeable about really anything. To me, the most we can ask for is tolerance and basic human decency. Perhaps you disagree. Let me know in the comments. Thanks.